Aloha. Aloha. You guys are great. Good morning. My name is Jonathan Fritzler, and I am the founder of Education Energy. And the author of a book called Hack Your Education, The Student Guide to Turning Projects into Profits and Making Your Passion Your Profession. I want to start off today by sharing a poem that I wrote. And uh, how many people here know about, uh, know about TED Talks? TED Talks? So I opened up my TED Talk with a slam poem. And it goes like this. Year after year, I witnessed all my fellow students working like slaves hunched over their computers. Crammed into a library, the sound of a million clicks of their keyboards harmonizing like singing crickets. The university is a factory pumping out professionals, yet is a degree all we need to succeed in this world? With the cost of books, supplies, a dorm, and food, we're assigned 48 hours of homework to do? With tuition fees, credits, and emergencies, it all adds up to living the university dream. When I grow up, I want to be a professional college student, attaining multiple degrees, and eventually, I'll become so intelligent that I'll discover a way to pay off all my debt. Let's face it. We spend money recklessly to develop professionally. We spend hours cramming information into our minds endlessly. We stress, sweat, stay up all night, producing what I call education energy. You see, in every major study, we're assigned big projects, and in one single semester is where our learning reflects. Marketing plans, sociology papers, research galore. There's collaborative group projects, and our teacher is our mentor. With all the work that students exert, we could be changing history. Yet, where all the education energy ends up seems to be a mystery. We aimlessly focus our projects on how the curriculum is designed with a goal to finish the project, get a grade, and resign. Ultimately, our projects are thrown into the trash to be recycled into a degree when we graduate, alas. Semesters breeze by year after year. The only thought in the student's mind is that the end is near. This energy is a resource that we can no longer waste because the students are the solution to the challenges we face. I stand before you today with a new paradigm, and I'm here to declare that it's about time. Thank you. So I guess you could say that I was an average college, university student going to school, going through the motion of this rite of passage, this process that we all go into to enter into the next phase of our life. And this is one of those rites of passage that we as global citizens all go through. But at the time, it didn't feel very meaningful. It felt like actually very meaningless. A lot of the work that I was doing felt like it wasn't actually being applied to my real life. It didn't seem relevant. 80% of the information we learn in school, we forget after school. So what's the point? This is a, a photo that I took from the University of Hawaii. This is actually a trash can filled with dissertations. This is the work that students spend their entire life up until that moment doing just so it could be thrown away at the end of the year when they don't have room for more dissertations. So I was going through this process and uh, one day I was going to school and I got hit by a truck. Um, this is actually a photo of a TV show that I was in and I got killed in the TV show. This is just a dramatic reenactment. So don't worry, I wasn't actually harmed like that, but um, I had a concussion and uh, during my recovery, I was forced to reevaluate my life and my impact in the world. I became increasingly aware of the difference between the rich and poor. I became aware of the reckless destruction of the environment for capital gain and the lack of clean water for every human being. And it came a point in my life where I started to ask myself, what is my purpose? And not only what is the purpose of my life or my job or my relationships, but what is the purpose of my education? Like if I'm gonna do all this work and spend all this time and energy doing work that's gonna end up in the garbage, what's the point? And so it came a point where I had to make a decision. Am I gonna stay in the old world and think that I am powerless 
and think that I don't have a right to create my own education? Am I gonna go through the process of having the world tell me how I'm supposed to live and what I'm supposed to do? Or am I gonna step up and become a leader of my own life? And I think that that's the calling that all of us in this room are all on the same page with. We're all here because we're leaders in our own life and we see ourselves as future leaders of this planet. And so I just wanna commend you for the work that you're doing, for showing up here, for being here in this room and, and committing yourself to a greater purpose on this planet. So at the time, uh, I was studying business at the University of Hawaii and I had a few projects. I had a feasibility study, a sociology paper and a marketing plan that were all focused on different issues, different concepts. Um, but at that point, I decided that I wouldn't do projects that didn't have meaning anymore. And so I went to all of my teachers and I told them that I wanted to actually address a real issue in the, in the community. And um, they said, okay. So I created this organization called AMP, the Aloha Music Project. Um, we were a grassroots movement of social entrepreneurs and peace leaders who harnessed their education energy, AKA their school research, as a renewable resource to create and build a better world. And so what we did was we started to identify which projects we could use in school to start to actually uh, create a social uh, impact uh, marketable plan, something to, uh, some sort of project that we could work together on to actually develop an a event to implement our social impact ideas. And so uh, in the process, over two years, I produced and developed over 50 events at the University of Hawaii and uh, helped artists and musicians share their voice, um, collaborate on research, and really just be able to put their ideas into action using our school research. Uh, we developed curriculum, and I was actually the first university, uh, undergraduate university student at the University of Hawaii to create my own university course for college credit. Um, and in my book, Hack Your Education, I dedicated the book to all of the university professors and administrators who laughed at me when I asked how I could create my own course and told me it was impossible and that I had to be a grad student at least to create my own course, because I did. And um, we had a, a, a group right there where students would literally just take their homework and combine their school projects together to write grants and business plans. So um, in the process, I was able to actually get uh, my, uh, one of my businesses funded. It was a, a million dollar recording studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, because I built the Aloha Movement Project nonprofit organization. Because I built, got that traction and started to actually implement my ideas, um, I was able to get funding to build the recording studio. and it led me to giving a TED talk as well called the Education Energy Movement. Um, and basically, I just became the expert of my own niche. I, I created my own idea. And I think that's the whole moral of the story here is that we can literally create anything. Like any idea that you have is not too big. You just need to start. You need to take action right now. And we're, we're doing it by being in this room. But the reality is that the jobs of the future aren't gonna be found in a book, in a textbook that's already outdated. The jobs of the future are created right here in this room, right now, with that epiphany that blows your mind. That revelation that literally you can create anything. And that's what I've done. I've um, utilized all of my research. In the last two years of my education, I actually negotiated with every single one of my teachers to modify my assignments. And that was something that is unheard of in the past because in the past, we are taught that you are a student and I am the teacher and you have to listen to me and until I give you the passing grade, you're not good enough. You're not a professional until you go through this rite of passage and friends, I am here to tell you that you are good enough and you can create anything that you want and you are the owner of your own education. And so that's exactly what I did. I uh, used my research to publish uh, a few different books and an audio program uh, called Make Your Passion Your Profession and um, The Art of Establishing an Internship. This was once I graduated from school, I uh, now as a consultant, as an educational consultant, I help companies create education programs that are accredited by the university um, and turn businesses into actual college courses. 
um, and of course, helping students uh, learn how to start a business while they're in school and have their business running by the time they graduate. Uh, I specialize in working with PhD and master's students, uh, but also undergrads and high school students that want to use their research to create a sustainable business idea. Um, I also help students figure out how to create or score their dream job uh, before they graduate so that you can actually start to implement your ideas and implement your research. I mean, imagine if you were to say, oh, I've got, I want to work for Google or I want to work for this big, awesome company, but you think it's impossible to get a job there. Well, what happens if you take every single one of your school research projects and focus it on that company and call up the exact department that you want to work in and apply your research and your learning to that department? you're gonna get a job. And of course, how to establish yourself as an expert or a thought leader in your field while you're in school. So to become a thought leader, you know, think about what it is, what, what is it that, what is the new industry, what does that emerging future look like? What does the, the new world look like? Because the industrial revolution is, is, is over, it's ancient, it's expired. We need sustainable ideas. We need things that are going to be seeds to be planted into the future, and you can water it with your ideas and your energy and watch it grow. And friends, there's nothing more exciting than doing just that. So um, in the process of launching this organization, I've helped uh, over 500 uh, students develop businesses and organizations and different community initiatives uh, using their school research projects. Um, we've also expanded to uh, different states and countries around the world with our Education Energy Ambassador Program. Uh, basically, I work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you uh, create a strategy for your own vision and what you want to do, and then also help other students do the same. Um, so a couple last things. How, how am I doing on time? Three minutes. Perfect. Um, so education energy is an untapped renewable energy. Let's get clear on that. We are spending trillions of dollars a year to work our asses off on projects that have the right to actually be realistic and be implemented. You are the owner of your education energy. You have the right to do with it as you please. as You have a right to, to a meaningful education. Your teacher is your mentor, not a dictator. Neo, I didn't come here to, you didn't come here to make the choice. You've already made it. You're here to try to understand why you made it. I love the matrix. Um, purp the purpose of education is advancement in society. And so if we're going to advance society, we can't rely on the, the old ideas, the old textbooks, the old way of thinking. We, the purpose of education is to advance society. And in order to do that, we need to take real action and not learn about history. Or not just learn about history. Um, standardization versus sustainability. I hear a lot about what is what does sustainable education look like? Sustainable education is education that actually sustains itself. The sustainable education is entrepreneurship in classrooms. It's students making money. It's teachers learning about entrepreneurship so that they can teach students how to turn their ideas into sustainable initiatives that are realistic and actually add value. And it's not just about sustainability. It's about regenerative business, business that, that creates opportunity. And we're gonna see more and more of this. This is a, a trend that is unfolding and is not gonna stop because this is the future of education. Purpose-driven projects equal real meaning and real value. Um, your strategy, your education strategy is greater than education itself, meaning your vision and your ideas uh, in, in a strategy. And that's something that I wanna offer all of you is a framework that I have developed uh, to help other students create their strategy. And if you're interested in getting a copy of this program, I would love to send it to you. Um, I will hand out a piece of paper and if you wanna put your email on there, I would love to send you a free copy of this education strategy document so that you can create your own and help other students create theirs as well. Um, because in the 21st century, uh, the education strategy is your business plan for your education. Your teachers are your investors and your stakeholders, and they are the ones that you need to negotiate and with and be able to convince that your vision is just as important as the curriculum, and there is a way to integrate your vision with your education and make your passion your profession. Thank you so much. Aloha.